The Large Hadron Collider, or LHC, near Geneva on the Swiss-French border is the largest physics experiment on Earth, and the most powerful particle accelerator ever built. It's currently being upgraded to become the High Luminosity LHC, increasing by a factor of 10 the number of particles that can be accelerated and collided. In this enhanced form, Scheduled for completion in 2027, it'll be able to smash together many more particles per second and thereby increase the chances of spotting rare events that might lead to new discoveries. Already though, there are plans to build an even larger machine, the Future Circular Collider or FCC. The FCC would occupy an underground tunnel about 100 kilometers in circumference, making it almost four times the size of the LHC. Whereas the LHC, when colliding two beams of protons, can reach a maximum of 14 trillion electron volts, TeV, the FCC would extend this by a factor of about 7 to 100 trillion electron volts. Of course, projects such as the Future Circular Collider don't come cheap. As a rough estimate, the development and building costs would run to about $20 billion, with a further billion dollars per year operational costs. There's a strong argument that such money would be better spent on feeding the world's poor, tackling pollution and climate change, or finding cures for various diseases. But to put it in perspective, the world spends about $2,000 billion every year on defense. The world's richest individual could buy eight future circular colliders and still have plenty of change. The total cost of the International Space Station to date is $150 billion, several times that of the FCC. If we focus just on physics, including astrophysics, which is my own specialty, a very good case can be made for allocating the billions needed to fund mega colliders to other experiments and instruments that might have a better chance of producing important breakthroughs. A next generation gravitational wave observatory, for instance. Justifying the Large Hadron Collider was relatively easy in that it had a definite immediate goal to find the Higgs boson, the missing piece of the standard model puzzle. Theory gave a rough guide as to the energy regime in which the Higgs was expected to lie, and in 2012 the LHC duly came up with the goods. The Higgs boson was found, and the standard model, our best understanding of how nature operates at subatomic scales, was completed. Since then, the LHC has done more important work uncovering dozens of new particle states within the standard model framework, and what's often overlooked, ruling out some ideas of what physics may lie beyond the standard model. But to be frank, the LHC hasn't yet broken through into completely new ground in areas such as string theory and supersymmetry, topics that I look at in detail in other videos on this channel. And there's no guarantee that a particle collider several times bigger and more powerful than the LHC will bring about the breakthrough into a new realm of physics, because we don't know in terms of energy where that new realm starts. At the very least, the future circular collider would help narrow down the possibilities of what a unified theory of everything might be like, but whether such narrowing down of possibilities, together with the outside chance of a sensational discovery, justifies the outlay, is debatable. The one thing we really don't need to worry about is that large, high-energy instruments like the LHC or FCC are existentially dangerous. No, they're not going to destroy the planet by opening up interdimensional rifts, whatever they may be, or swarms of mini black holes. Such fears are born of a misunderstanding of the science involved. The fact is, far more energetic collisions than are possible with anything we could conceivably build at present take place on a routine basis at the edge of space when cosmic rays strike atoms and molecules in the upper atmosphere. Earth has experienced billions of years of such ultra-high energy events and survived intact. 
Another argument against big science projects such as giant particle colliders is that they bring very little in the way of practical benefits. I would just say this, often fundamental research can lead to very significant future applications. Quantum theory, for instance, in the early years of the 20th century seemed to be of purely academic interest and virtually unintelligible to most people. Now it forms the basis for electronics, including the technology behind the internet, and ironically underpins the very means of communication that some people use to broadcast their opposition to pure science. Fundamental research can have profound future consequences, but more importantly to my mind, research into the unknown, pushing back the frontiers of knowledge, exploration, is what we humans do. That spirit of inquiry, the urge to probe the unknown, is one of the qualities that defines us. It's one of our greatest strengths. Do we need a bigger, more powerful accelerator beyond the LHC? Would the resources be better used in other areas of science? These are good questions. And as usual, all your comments are very welcome.